In this video, I'm going to show you two types of toggles. I'm going to show you the basics of a switch, then I'll show you how to use a toggle button and customize it a bit, which I think is a bit nicer. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Here I am in a brand new Xcode project. I just did file new, haven't written a line of code yet. So in our VStack, let's start with the basic toggle. So I'll do toggle and you can see there's a bunch of initializers. I'm not going to dive into each one. We'll, we'll play with a couple, but I'm going to cover the most commonly used ones. So for the basics, I'll do title key and is on and you'll see what this gives us. So the title key will say Wi-Fi and is on you see takes a binding to a Boolean. So how this works is we'll have a Boolean. Let's create that at state private var is Wi-Fi on equals false. So every time we switch our toggle, we're switching this from true to false and we can act accordingly, whether we want to change the UI based on is Wi-Fi on or actually execute the code to turn Wi-Fi off. Whatever you want to do based on this conditional, now you have it. So let's put the binding in you dollar sign is Wi-Fi on. And as you can see in our preview, we now have the basics of a switch. So that is the bare bones, absolute basics. Let's build on this a little bit. Another initializer on toggle that I like to use is the system image. This is the SF symbols. So let's do title key with system image. So now title key again, Wi-Fi system image, just Wi-Fi. I looked that up in SF symbols, pretty easy to remember. And then the binding is Wi-Fi on. We'll delete our toggle here down below. So now this looks a little bit nicer, right? We get that SF symbol next to Wi-Fi showing what it is and what it does, just sprucing up the UI a little bit. Now you may be wondering this default green switch, how do we change that? That's very simple with a dot tint modifier and we'll say dot pink. So now you see our switch is pink and you can make that whatever color you like. And before we move on to the toggle button, the last thing I wanna show you is you'll most commonly see these switches in a form. So change the V stack to a form and let's add a couple different toggles here. I'm not gonna take the time to like change the name and everything, but just to show you, you know, you can say orange, yellow, just to show you the different tint colors on the switches, but this is, oh, let me get rid of this padding on the form. That looks weird, as you can see. There you go. This looks like a typical form in iOS and they're all gonna be connected, right? Because they're all connected to the same Boolean. If you had multiple switches, you would have, you know, like is location on, is microphone on, and that would line up accordingly. But you can see, different color switches in the form. This is how you typically see it. And that's my advice. If you're using a form like this, use the switch, right? That's how users expect it, right? Look at your settings screen. And to be honest, the toggle button, as you can see here, doesn't look that great in a form. So if you're using a form, use the switch. If you're using a toggle somewhere else in your UI, I recommend using a toggle button. So let me show you how to build that. So let's get rid of these bottom two toggles. Just go back to our first toggle. Let's get out of a form, go back to our V stack. It's pretty simple to get these toggle buttons because it's still a toggle, but now you just do dot toggle style and you pass in button. Now there's a couple other options we can do, but as you can see, now we have a button here. I think that looks a lot nicer in a UI rather than those switches, again, unless you're in a form, but this looks pretty cool. Now, what if you want to simplify this even further? You just want the icon. Well, there's another modifier, label style. And then you can do icon only, title and icon, title only. We want icon only. There you go. But because it still has the title here in the toggle, screen readers and accessibility settings will be able to read this, that this is a Wi-Fi toggle, even though it just shows the symbol. So again, that's a nice little clean button to toggle Wi-Fi on and off, but we want to indicate that somehow. So again, you can update the UI based on this Boolean. So for system image, let's say is Wi-Fi on. If that is true, show the Wi-Fi symbol. If that is false, show Wi-Fi dot slash. Again, these are SF symbols that I've already looked up and memorized. And we can make this a little bigger with jot font dot large title, just so you can see it. So when I tap on this, Wi-Fi is now on. You see that little herky jerky motion? Uh, this is a little bonus lesson here. There's another modifier dot content transition. And there's a bunch of these. We'll do symbol effect. You can see you can pass in various effects. We'll just keep the default. Again, that's a whole another lesson. But now when I turn Wi-Fi on, you see that transition and now Wi-Fi is on. Turn it off, there you go. And if we want to comment out the label style, now we get our full Wi-Fi label and you can see that transition. So again, pretty cool toggles when you use the button style, but if you're in a form, definitely use the switch. I personally think it is a must for iOS developers that are looking for work to have a portfolio website to showcase your projects. And that brings me to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to help you get that iOS developer portfolio, blog, or personal website up and running very quickly. Now I know we're all developers with the skills and the desire to build the web page ourselves, but I would argue there's an opportunity cost to your time. If you're an iOS developer trying to build a great product, a great app, maybe spending a lot of time learning the ins and outs of web development, responsive design, isn't the best way to spend your time. That's why I recommend Squarespace to build that personal website, the blog, your portfolio, or maybe a landing page for your app. 
They have all kinds of beautiful themes and templates to get you started. They handle all the analytics and the SEO for you. Again, it just saves you so much time so you can get back to doing what you want to do, and that is building iOS apps. So when you're ready to get started, go to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.